Imagine a field of thriving tulips in full bloom as they soak up the warmth from the sun into their extended petals, compelling their species to multiply. Imagine as this full day of pollinating comes to an end, the tulips instinctively respond to the declining temperature and close for the night's rest. A rest which protects against the dark and cool evening that lies ahead. Imagine the same series of protective movements produced by nature that can be developed to provide the same benefits of protection for humans in design. Within the tulip's own ecosystem, light, air, water, and temperature are all contributors for the tulip's adaptive strategies to flourish, as seen with the unfolding of the petals during its reproduction phase and the contraction of the petals during the phase of protection. The tulip cells' processes of turgidity and osmosis are the unseen mechanisms regulating this behavior. As water moves into the cell, it expands, triggering a pressure, which induces the flower petals to unfold its living hinge and absorb the warmth of the sun for pollination. As the water moves out of the cell, the loss of pressure relaxes the petals and the hinging motion closes for the organism's protection. In order to achieve a deeper understanding of the tulip petal's motion, the cyclic concept of expansion and contraction was chosen as focus of our explorations. This process was further developed through trial and error experiments of replicating the living hinge joint through generator modeling concepts that isolated the auxetic shape down to its simplest form. The various materials used to construct the isolated form were then tested to the environmental conditions of heat and water for expansion and contraction properties to assist with further development of modeling compilations. In the next phase of our modeling progression, the manufacturing processes of stamping, forming, glass blowing, annealing, and paper folding were researched and applied to give a greater breadth to our explorations. Exploratory models applied the principles learned from the generator model experiments and also abstracted the ideas of manufacturing processes to further depict the expansion and contraction, tension and compression, and cyclic movement. Exploratory models using durable, lightweight, translucent, and resilient materials were constructed to best depict the understanding of the range of motion and flexibility desired. Our tested material palette included urethane-coated paper of various thicknesses, translucent mylar and gloss and matte finishes, basswood, plywood, surgical tubing, carbon fiber, epoxy resin, bimetallic strips, and nitinol. The most interest generated from the material study were ones that showed the greatest opportunities for flexibility. Initially, we worked with carbon fiber to understand its materiality. An examination of the stamping process and the ability of carbon fiber fabric to accept and hold many forms was further investigated. Carbon fiber fabric was then coated in epoxy and sandwiched between wax paper until cured. The resulting carbon fiber strips were surprisingly flexible and resilient, prompting an attempt to weave bimetallic strips into the joints as a way of activation. However, the heat necessary to trigger the bimetallic strip began to melt the epoxy within the fiber and create an odorous smoke. As the carbon fiber proved difficult to apply to our concept of expansion and contraction, we moved on to experimenting with folding mylar and paper products. These materials lend themselves to flexibility while maintaining defined form, making them more suitable for the domain transfer from biology to architectural technology. We discovered that mylar was more difficult to flex than paper. In order to enhance the material's properties, the mylar was dipped in urethane to provide a protective coating. Unsure of what results would take place, we allowed the material to dry overnight and found mylar to be more forgiving and flexible. Various thicknesses of cardstock were also dipped in urethane, resulting in the discovery of a flexible and more durable waterproof surface. After obtaining this knowledge, we saw the promise of potential in the paper folding principles of origami. We then combined the flexibility and shape memory capabilities of the adhesive bond mylar with wood, giving more stability and structure to the form. We further explored paper folding and developed a series of hinges that work collectively to expand and contract in a systematic fashion. The final iteration of the model used urethane-coated mylar for its translucency and shape memory capacity. By using the manufacturing processes of templating and laser cutting, the urethane-coated mylar was married to the wood structure developing into a honeycomb array. Our final modeling concept was derived from the continued exploration of paper folding, specifically origami, to exhibit shape-shifting characteristics that best mimic the tulip petal cells. The auxetic cell shape was modeled out of cardstock which showed rigidity yet maintained flexibility. Although starting out as square pieces of material, when the folding exercise was completed, the shape transformed into one of curvature. 
Through exploration of contraction and expansion, the model showed capabilities to reduce size into a rod-like shape and swell out into a spherical form. The addition of a nitinol spring brought the model to life and provided further development opportunities. The following model concept discoveries have potential for further investigation that would substantiate sustainable passive architectural design. Some potential architectural prospects to consider would include shading strategies, natural light diffusion and disbursement, and airflow regulation in relation to ambient temperature control. Not only would human protection be at the forefront of the design intent, but the opportunities to achieve a net zero waste ratio are also viable.